Thursday, the 7th of December 2023, and I'm in my cabin studio in Paradise Road, Simonstown, not that far from the southern tip of Africa. People have been asking me for copies of my memoir, History Washes Away, which was published in 2016, but that's now out of print, and I didn't really know how to respond. My son Dominic suggested that I consider an audiobook, and after discussion, we thought that it might be a wonderful idea to combine the audio with photographs and videos, and then publish them in parts on YouTube. We think that there will be some 15 to 20 parts, each roughly 15 minutes long, and I'm about halfway through the project. Back then, when I wrote the memoir initially, I had attended a, a workshop, and I soon realized that writing a proper chronologically sequenced biography was out of the question, but that a collection of anecdotes might be a possibility. I'd been using personal recollections in conjunction with original songs at various live performances over the past few years, so I had some material in the bag, as it were. I'd also been busy for a while pulling my song lyrics together, of which there are very many, into one format in order to make them more accessible and coherent. So gradually the idea arose of combining lyrics and anecdotes into a kind of anthology. The Australian songwriter Paul Kelly had done this beautifully in his book How to Make Gravy, which motivated me further. I made a start back then and gave my first efforts to the writing coach. She replied with important advice. It can't be a scattered account. The beads making up the story need to be strung together by a theme. Well, this was a lot easier said than done, but eventually I concluded that my prevailing themes have been travel and music. So here they are, songs and recollections written over a span of some 30 plus years, well, it's 40 plus years now, strung on threads of time, travel and occasionally turmoil. The beauty of an audiobook is that there are a number of wonderful options in regard to song lyrics. These can either be read as poems or sung a cappella or inserted in the form of studio or live recordings and then lastly inserted in the form of video clips. Aha, I almost forgot. It's important to say a few words, I think, about the choice of the photograph which was used for the cover of the original book and which we are using also throughout this series of narrations. Walking in the Cedarburg in 2008, I noticed one of Mother Nature's pieces of art. A line of pebbles nestling on a bed of rough sand in a rocky fissure on our path through the Fainbos. Had we been near a river, one might have assumed that it was the force of water which had fashioned it. But we were on higher ground. So how had those pebbles and the sand got there? Perhaps this had been a seabed in a previous era, that perfectly composed still life might have been resting there in private splendor for thousands or even millions of years. History washes away. Doing this audiobook remains the most wonderful experience. May you enjoy it. And thank you for watching and listening.
flight from Düsseldorf to Palmitfontein took five days. It was March 1953 and some 25 German technicians, eager for a fresh start in a new world, were flown to South Africa, a country with plenty of coal and promise. The fischer tropsch process, making it possible to convert coal to liquid fuel, had been acquired by the Allies as a spoil of war, but it took a remote colony to grasp the opportunity and really make it work. The young Germans were excited by the prospect and wanted a part of it. My father was one of them. The plane was a creaky four-engined ex-World War II bomber chartered by the William Dempster Line with a Polish crew and equipped with canvas seats, no heating and certainly no business class. Some of the men had brought packed lunches, but those only lasted for the first two days at most. Night flying in Africa was out of the question, as the airstrips were not lit, so the journey consisted of a series of day hops. First stop was La Valletta in Malta, followed by Wadi Halfa in Sudan, then Entebbe in Uganda, then Victoria Falls, and finally Palmitfontein near Johannesburg. This was long before the days of Jan Smuts Airport, let alone ORT. It was cold up in the air and very noisy. The canvas seats were not designed for long hauls and there was no service, so they were pleased to land every evening in yet another exotic place, taking them ever closer to their new lives in southern Africa. On arrival, they were given a generous meal and taken by truck through a fierce Transvaal thunderstorm to a barren stretch of felt some way to the south. Today, Sasselberg lies just outside of Gauteng, but back then, Johannesburg was no more than a large town and the name Sasselberg had not yet been coined. They started work on the very next day. My father's permanent resident document describes him as a pipe fitter, but he was and remains an all-rounder, with that typically German relentless work ethic and zero tolerance for inaccuracy. His colleagues would have been similar. The refinery was completed within three years. It seems like a long way back now, and so much has changed, for better or worse. My father could surely not have imagined how our African adventure would unfold. The population has trebled since he arrived, and there are now three Sassol refineries in this extraordinary land. My folks have long since returned to Europe, and they no longer walk, ski, sail, cycle, nor swim, but live in a picture-perfect village in the Bavarian forest, of which my father likes to say, Here is die Welt noch in Ordnung. Here the world still works. He misses Africa. Blood of Africa Can you feel the blood of Africa beating in your heart? Would you still survive without her? Could you live apart from her music? Without her fire, her magic rhythm fills the horizon. When the snow is falling, you will try to warm your soul. The fire in your heart will burn the trees of Africa. Wood of iron, wood of fever, thorns of passion, her population. Deep inside the concrete jungle, she will cry for space. Who cause he in your mind will find the skies of Africa. 
fly forever above the desert. Her lakes and rivers ignore her borders. Her perfect weather will leave you never. When you sell the gold of Africa, you will be poor. The paper of the world will fill your books, but not your stores. The endless hunger, Kalahari, Kilimanjaro, Serengeti, Okavango, the endless hunger. Will you sell the gold of Africa? When you do, there will still be hunger. Walk with me, my eyes are getting weak. The voices in my head no longer speak. Oh, Africa, my Africa. Can you feel the blood of Africa beating in your heart? Would you still survive without her? Could you live apart? From her music Without her fire Her magic rhythm Fills the horizon When the snow is falling You will try to warm your soul The fire in your heart Will burn the trees of Africa Would a vine, would a fever, the thorns of passion, the population. for space Cause he in your mind will find the skies of Africa fly forever across the desert her lakes and rivers ignore her borders her perfect weather will leave you never Serengeti